All right, so I want to emphasize another strategy here that I didn't really see anybody using because make a picture does not seem to apply very much to this problem, right? I want to maybe generalize that a little bit to talk about multiple representations of things. So you might have a thing in words, you might have a picture, you might have it with algebraic symbols. And I want to show a little bit of the power of applying these kind of things to something like this. So for me, multiplication means area. And some people complain because what do you do with negative numbers if multiplication is supposed to mean area? And OK, fine. It's, it's a problem. But I just tend to sweep that stuff under the rug because to me, the picture is so powerful that it's really worth doing. So I want to make a picture of this thing as an area. What should I start by drawing? How about a rectangle? OK. And what can you say about this rectangle? An area is x times y. How does that happen? Well, lots of possible ways, but what would be the convenient way? You could have an x and a y. I try to keep my habit of making my x's horizontal and my y's vertical. Just keep that, keep that lined up. Yeah. OK, so that's the x times y. Where am I going to put x in this picture? Yeah, it's really, I need an area of x. It's really 1 times x. So where should that go? OK, down at the bottom, that would be a place. That could be an area of 1 times x, or just x. And this would have to be a 1 length segment there. Oh, and I could put a 1 times y over here. OK, and that's 1 times y, or y. So this picture is kind of sad now, right? <laughs> It's missing a little corner. So it, it seems to me like everybody I talked to learned completing the square in their Algebra 1 class. I have never met anybody who learned completing the rectangle. <laughs> but it's the same idea, right? For completing the square, you take you know, your x squared, you put 3x's here, 3x's here. You say, oh, I need a 9 more to finish my square. You can complete rectangles too. I need one more. Right? So what I want to do with my x times y plus x plus y is I wish I had one more, back to wishful thinking. But that's not allowed. But if I put a minus 1 here also, then I just had my wish granted. Right? Mathematics grants me my wish of a plus 1. So then why is this thing what I wanted with the plus 1 in it? I unfortunately have this minus 1 hanging around outside. But what makes me so happy about x times y plus x plus y plus 1? The area of the rectangle is the length and width multiplied together. OK, so first of all, I'd like to point out that if you're needing to compute these machine operations in your head, this is really handy. How do I do 6 with 8? I do 7 times 9 minus 1. That's a lot easier than 6 times 8 plus 6 plus 8, right? So this makes the computations a lot quicker. Multiply and subtract 1 is easier than multiply and add and add. But this does even more than that. This other representation is really useful. Really useful. Because let's try this same idea now, except instead of multiplying everything out, let's use this, this representation. Okay, So if I take... If I take a plus 1 times b plus 1 minus 1 as my first number and c as my second number, and I combine them, I'm using this same rule, but I'm going to use it in this form. So what does this say? Add 1 to each number. So I add 1 to each number. Add 1 to each number. OK, this is c plus 1. Ooh, adding 1 to this is really easy, isn't it? Because it has this convenient minus 1. Here I was all annoyed about the minus 1 because it messed up my factoring plan. Now I'm happy about the minus 1 because I'm just about to add 1 to it to plug it back into this formula. Right? Add 1 to this number, and I have a plus 1 times b plus 1. Oh, and over there I have c plus 1. Huh. And now what am I supposed to do? I add 1 to each number. I did this step. Now I need to multiply those together. Oh, 
a plus 1 times b plus 1 times c plus 1, and then subtract 1. Now I want to combine that with d. What's going to happen? <laughs> I'm going to add 1 to each, so this will go away, and then I'm going to multiply, and then I'm going to stick another subtracting 1 on there. Isn't that amazing? Okay, so I'll shut up for a while so you can think about the implications of that. <laughs>